Kia ora, welcome to Dan Hooker Podcast, episode 8. I have a very special guest today, John Bruin. What's John up, Bruin uh, fights out of Brave FC. He's got a big fight coming up. Well, that's only a week and a half away. Mm. What is it, like eight days? We're in the when do, you, when do you fly? So it's eight days away. When do you fly out to... It's in Abu Dhabi, uh, Bahrain. It's, it's in Bahrain, yeah. In Bahrain. Of Bahrain. Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the flight time from New Zealand to Bahrain? <sighs> so it's like... It's 17 hours to uh, Dubai, and then it's one hour <laughs> across from there. So don't. Oh, know. that's not that bad. Yeah, that's so. not that bad. Well, it's not as bad as the UFC boys. They made them fly. Um, they made them fly to Las Vegas. Well, they actually had like two stops. They stopped like San Diego. Yeah. Stopped to LA. Flew to Vegas. Stayed in Vegas for three or four days, Oof. and then flew. And that's like a, it's like another, 18 or 14, 15 hours from Vegas to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, so they did two 14 hour trips and they had to come back the exact same way so those boys oh, flew back okay. from Abu Dhabi to Vegas okay I thought on the way back maybe yeah, they had the round that trip. Thing. why okay, didn't they yeah, catch the, why didn't they catch know? the plane trip you're getting on well I guess like everyone wants to travel now so more more plane tickets for one for one travel maybe that feels good but I want to get there real quick <laughs> and just get back real quick eh? you know start my start my quarantine start my little two week holiday yeah, two week yeah. holiday Bob yeah, two week yeah, holiday exactly so I got a lot of expertise in there. You start going crazy with like, with like four four days left, three days left. Like that's when I really started that's going. That's what back. I heard. That's what well, I didn't is. sleep the night before I got out. Oh shit! A two week quarantine back in New Zealand. The night before I got out, I just didn't sleep. That because you get out, you get out the same time that you arrive. Mm. So my flight arrived back from Vegas uh, five a.m. So I got out at, at 5 a.m. in the morning. I just couldn't get to sleep. Mm. Like I was, I was like storming backwards and forwards in my room, like waiting. My sister come and pick me up, and I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. trying to shut my eyes, trying to get some rest. Couldn't get a wink, bro. Anyway, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get into a, a bit of you and a bit of uh, mm. your fight coming up in eight days in a little bit. But we're gonna quickly recap the UFC, um, big UFC event, which just went past the UFC. I have to check the numbers all the time. Two five four. Yeah. Pretty stacked card. Pretty um, some pretty good finishes. Some pretty, especially on that, especially on that main card. Tai Tui Vasa back in the win column. Yeah, that was sick. That was sick. That was sick. Mm. Uh, shut him down, Stefan Struve. A lot of taller guys have that, like guys that are real tall on. When you just start swinging at them, they they tend to freeze. Like it was yeah. the same thing with me with like the James Vick fight. Like yeah, when you just because they're so used to just being like the taller guy and and everyone like keeping at range in the gym and not like people are nice in the gym, right? Yeah, people, not gonna yeah, bore yeah, you, you need like to that. understand like <laughs> people forget yeah. a lot of stuff. Like what works in training or works in you spar for. Hour, hour and a half. Exactly. After a week of tiring training, yeah. when you fight, you've been resting, resting for a week, and you pull no punches. So that's kind of tied to a Versailles, followed like a just a classic strategy for a tall mm. man, which is, is swing on him, make him freeze, press him against the cage, chipped him away to the body, and eventually clipped him um, back behind the back behind the ear. Yeah. So back behind the ear, mucks up your equilibrium, get you get a bit of a jolt, bit of mm. a shock. You can always feel it, like. Just yeah. everyone at home, you're watching, tap, watching yeah, the right. video, just give yourself like a little... Yeah, you shake yourself little up. little like karate, karate chop there. <laughs> That's the shot he hit him with, <laughs> sat him down. Um, got on the beers, pissed the bed. Do you see that on Instagram? Pissed the bed. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask right. me, hey, don't ask me yeah, if yeah. I got stories like that. I got too many. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> I wake up in the morning after the UFC and I'm like scrolling through my thing and I look at the, his his Instagram and he posted on his Instagram and he's like, ah! <laughs> just and he shows like behind him in his bed and there's like a big just piss patch oh, in his what a bed. Legend. Go back. I'm not sure if he's the lead. He's probably mm. the lead, probably a bit of common oh, sense. He's real, but but right, a common yeah. sense got to him and he sobered up a bit and he's probably deleted it as of late. Um, but yeah, that's not something you want to post on nah. your Instagram. Oh well, I mean, we're yeah. saying of those Nelk boys. I've seen like a few of their videos. Yeah, do you yeah. know those guys? Have you watched their I, videos? I didn't, but I know that like his boys and stuff and. Well, apparently, like Dana <laughs> White, Dana yeah. White flew them over. Mm. Those guys are just. Famous. I've seen them teaching them how to do the shoey and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You couldn't Those boys are famous know? for smashing tins. So that's uh, how they. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's how they get down. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I didn't I even think it. they had. Uh, I don't think they had beers going like that in Abu Dhabi. Well, I seen them try to. Is it just Yas Island, which is like you're allowed alcohol or something? Probably. I know in Bahrain you're allowed it. You're allowed oh, it. You yeah. can't get it everywhere, but you can get. So um, Abu Dhabi, no. Nah. I think Abu Dhabi is all good. It's, ah. it's Saudi Arabia that is like, if if you're not. So when you get out on the streets. Yeah, you don't want to uh, play around there. You know. What anyway, I mean? mm. Tui Vasar back in a win column. Well, one win, one loss. He lost the after party, but he won the fight, which is the main thing. Mm. Back in the win column. Uh, Did he lose the after party? I feel like he won the after party. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get a shoey going. I seen that. Yeah. He got the shoe yeah, and he yeah. couldn't get the beer in they it. They were you know freaking I mean? out, right? Yeah, when he was like jumping up on the yeah, cage and jumped yeah, out. They okay, were freaking yeah. out. They're like coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, I, I Corona saw, from the I shoe. Saw like another, I saw another video out back when he went mm. out back and like finally tracked down some beers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, well, it's a shoey. Like what he does is he gets everyone to spit. And I was like, what wow. are we doing? Corona yeah. test. So we've been wearing masks all week and then we're spitting each other's my corner man's got to wear a mask yeah. but how about you eight just spitting the yeah. shoe and I'm going to interview it. me from across the cage <laughs> but um, I spit in my shoe beforehand you know funny Damn. game funny game uh, move up the card move up the card move up the card uh, I want to talk about the well it was a pretty straightforward fight the Alexander Volkov Walt Harris fight pretty straightforward fight um, open science fight Walt Harris well Walt Harris was the southpaw mm which means your liver's on the front. And he kind of just drifted in a little too close to the tall man and, and got one of those snap kicks to the liver. That's oh. pretty pretty instantaneous how he went down. Like he I missed like, it. I missed it completely. Oh, I yeah, he just like drifted in. He just drifted in. Uh, woke up like for a snap kick, just got him like right in the liver and he just went down. Like he just turned. Just was like, ah! Oh. Like just reacted straight away. You oh. knew it was over. Uh, came in and then Robert Whitaker, Jared Cannonier. Mm. Caught that, yeah. Yeah, it was a good fight. Good fight. There was a lot to kind of take from. Well, Rob looked good. Mm. Rob looked like um, Rob looked pretty well. He seemed like he was a little bit open for the low kick. But that's a funny thing. Like Jared Cannonier, when he was like orthodox, Rob was orthodox, and he was he was circling to his right and throwing mm. the low kick. That was working like a charm. Mm. It was working like a charm. Like he was kind of, he was timing that perfectly. Yeah. But he would start breaking him down, land a couple of low kicks. Then he would just, then he would just like randomly, there was like no method to kind of near like switching stances. Then he would, then he would like switch to southpaw. Yeah. Drift into Rob's right hand. And, drift and into just that high kick. And then just try to throw like a single off um, southpaw snap kick. Mm. And then he would like switch back. And like drift orthodox the opposite way to which the way that was working. It was like, yeah, yeah. you know, you've you've found the key. Just in the circle first two minutes, the, he yeah. found the key, and just then he was like, this oh, way, just, just circle this way and throw the locate. But yeah, he kept on like transitioning mm. um, for no apparent reason. So strange fight to me from Cannonier. I feel like he definitely had the ability to win that fight. Maybe his. Um, strategy was a little bit off mm. but yeah Robert Whitaker dropped him um, was it the third round yeah it was the third round he hold, he caught him with the trail the trail the four tra he threw the four, one yeah. four trailed the kick over the top Yeah, he had missed it he come close early in the fight twice mm. but then the third one connected Cannonier Cannonier was wobbled um, he didn't you know Rob didn't jump on him straight away. Mm. But then Cannonier like kind of turned to get a little bit of space. And he, he obviously hadn't realized that his legs went there. And he mm. like stumbled, tripped over his legs, fell. But he fell like right in front of Rob's cornerman. Oh. He fell like right in front of Rob's cornerman. But like Rob's cornerman jump up to celebrate. Like they jump up like, yeah. And when people do that, you're just like, oh, it's over. Yeah, yeah. So he came in with just like the machine gun fire. It's mm -hmm. over. It's waiting for the ref to pull it off. And Cannonier like survived the storm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like if, if they would have been able to stay like a little, a little cooler, if they stay there and they they go pick your shots, pick your yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah, Then he'll come in. He won't just do the machine gun finishing move. Yeah, he would have broken the defense. Yeah, <laughs> he'd pick his shots, and I feel mm. like that fight, that fight would have been stopped, and yeah. he would have been able to get him out of there in that third round. Um, but yeah. Robert I was Whitaker. watching that and everyone that was watching it with me was like, oh, he's done, he's done. And I was like, he's there. Like, yeah, he's yeah. there and Rob's doing the machine gun style, but he's yeah, there and the yeah, ref yeah, knows yeah, it and yeah. he's going to survive. And he did. So I was like, yeah, that was and interesting. Then he, yeah, that and out. then he like almost, he almost come back and clipped <laughs> oh, him man. at yeah. the end of the third round, which <laughs> yeah, is like, yeah. that turns like a, a, you know, a small mistake into like a real big one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that starts happening. 
Main event, Khabib Gagey. Uh, well, from mine, well, Khabib does exactly what Khabib did. Mm. Um, Gagey was doing real well with the low kicks. Like he landed, mm. I counted six like good low kicks, and they seem mm. to be like really starting to take an effect on Khabib. Like Khabib's legs or made him just a a little bit more desperate for the takedown. You can see yeah. him just like he just started. Because when when he when Khabib goes, he goes. Yeah. But you know that, that's a bit dangerous when you're just like when you're just when you just pull the trigger and go. Yeah. Like things can get a little bit murky and they can get a little bit dangerous. But it was like the accumulation of the leg kicks which made Justin uh, would made Khabib just I'm gonna get him down now. Yeah, like I need yeah. a, I need to press him. I need to press him. I need to get him down. I feel like for Gages, he was doing well with the striking. He was doing well, but. Um, there was no like real ring generalship. Nah. Like if you go back and watch like the Connor fight, like Connor took the center, Connor man the center of the cage, and that kind of made Kirby back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the one thing that Gagey didn't do. If he would have come out and been a bit more of a ring general, take the center of the cage, and well, if, you know, force Kirby to shoot out in the open because mm. he's not. Um, He's not as successful out in the open. He's more successful when he jams up against the cage. But Gagey was kind of reacting to a lot of his feints, reacting to a lot of his level changes, and just giving him the space, giving him the space. He was breaking down the leg, but he was too close to the cage. Mm. And that's when whenever Khabib kept shooting too close to the cage, he was getting him down. But Khabib's retired. Khabib's moved on, which has kind of blown the door off the lightweight division. Mm. It's... Uh, it's hunting season. Now it's, making now it's, the, now it's yeah. the bangers. Yeah, it's so bangers <laughs> now, the, now. Now the bangers are all in the mix. Um, what's coming up? <coughs> this weekend, UFC Fight Night Hall versus Silver. I just feel like it. Well, it's Anderson Silva's retirement fight, which is a big thing. I think he's just too, like his fundamentals. Uriah, Uriah Hall, great striker, does the incredible finishes. Mm. But um, for mine, like more of a... Um, you know, he he hasn't focused so much on the on the fundamentals of how to set them up. Like he kind of just just um, bottom bashes like good moves, mm. <laughs> and sometimes they were. Whereas Anderson Silva, in my opinion, one of the best strikers um, MMA's ever seen. I feel like just his fundamentals will be able to get him through um, through that fight. Bryce Mitchell, Andre Feely. That's a massive fight for Bryce Mitchell. You know the the country kid. He got the camo shots. Yeah, he's always yeah. like gunning for the camo shots. Andre Feely, that'll be a good good little contest. Greg Hardy, I don't want to talk about that. Bobby Green, I like Bobby Green. Alexander Hernandez. Okay, that'll that's be cool. my guy. Nah, they're not fighting. They're, they're two different ones. Bobby Green's fighting. I don't know who that is Thiago Moises. I don't know who that is. Okay, let's go, Bobby. Alexander Hernandez. Chris Gritzmeyer from the Ultimate Fighter. Man, I remember call, I, was, I was calling out Hernandez for like a minute. I was like, <laughs> "He's was a like, young oh, guy." Fight eh? me, fight me! Yeah, and then uh, Cowboy knocked him out. That's the guy. I yeah, think yeah. then he won a fight, and then Dober knocked him out. So, he got a big mouth on him all of a sudden ooh, when he thought that like that's how you make heaps of money. He told me he told me you know? he, was, he told me I was unranked and irrelevant. Tables have well, turned, bro. Well, Who's the tables have turned, kid. I'd still fight him. <laughs> Put him in his place. Nah, maybe another one. Yeah. I'll get this out of the way. Who else we got here? Dustin Jacoby. He's been, he was in the UFC. I believe he got released. He's been fighting in glory for like a long time now. He's been fighting in glory for like, oh. I would say like three or four years now. Back well, where at, is he? Well, he was uh, his first run. I'm pretty sure he was a middleweight, but now he's coming back at a light heavyweight, fighting Justin Ledet. That's a good fight. This is a good card. Mm. This is a good card. Jack Marshman, Sean Strickland. That's another good fight. Who else? Oh, there's a girl fight. Courtney Casey. Courtney Casey. Oh, we've seen her. In, I've seen her in Vegas. She gave me like a weird look. Like I was like, I think I've like seen her like another fight. She gave me like a weird look like, like an awkward like look and I was like well that was a bit strange but then it was because she's I think she's like married to another fighter oh, I forget oh, his name I forget his name she is uh, he's but Neil Darius knocked him out anyway but Neil Darius knocked him out what's his name oh man I know exactly who this is and I'm like anyway like that guy because she gave me a weird look and she's like married to that guy but Neil fought 
Yeah. And he, like, someone sent it to me after the fight. I got back to New Zealand after that fight because I was watching the fight yeah, cage yeah. side. Great fight. Like, yeah. incredible fight. He had Benil hurt. Benil turns the cards, puts him to sleep. And then someone sent me, like, a thing. And he, he was saying that he wanted to fight me next. And he was saying he's going to bash me worse than Barboza bashed me. That's what he was saying, this guy. What's his name? What is his now name? You've, we're going to have to find out. Because I, I remember watching a video of them talking about they cut weight together one time. And Who? I was like, oh, like the the boyfriend and the girlfriend, um, Casey's partner or whatever. I'm looking at this. And, uh, yeah, and like, you know, I mean, holding pads for your partner doesn't always go well. So I can't imagine <laughs> that. Uh, I can't imagine weight cutting uh, with yeah, your partner so is going to go well. My wife is like completely disinterested in anything I've never met a, a, a couple that have successfully uh, uh, pulled that Drakkar off. close. That's it. That's it. Mm, and don't, don't write them checks, yeah, boy. Man. Don't write okay. them checks your ass can't catch. He's from the lab, I think. He's from Cannoneer spot. Oh, that's a good gym. That's a good camp. That was kind of interesting how Cannoneer was throwing that calf kick because like everyone credits Henderson, Benson Henderson for that calf calf kick. Well, he was no, nah, okay. well, he was throwing like a straight low, right? He was like right above, right above the knee. Yeah, true, he was true. like right above the knee. I don't think that was. <laughs> but it's like Rob's like super side on stance, which kind of leaves yeah. him like. Uh, you know what I found funny good. about that okay. is like after that, all the breakdowns being like, what would happen if it was five rounds and the leg kicks started taking effect and i was like well did they take effect in the three rounds no <laughs> did he slow down in the three rounds and stop moving no. yeah yeah he didn't seem to care like he was it's like when uh, israel fought for the glory belt and he fought simon marcus and they're like oh man he's definitely slowing down from the low kicks. Yeah, i yeah, said yeah. just because the guy lands a low kick doesn't mean <laughs> the guy is slowing down like if he's not slowing down he's not slowing down yes like and the low kicks aren't working like maybe they look good but it's a funny thing you can get like a low kick you can get hit with like 20 low kicks like hard low kicks and they have like no effect yeah. but there might be like that one that just lands at the right yeah, spot yeah. your muscle wasn't tent, tense at the right time yeah, and yeah. it just like it just kills it oh, like, you know flat. all about that <laughs> yeah you know all about you can that see it in the eyes that's yeah, why like yeah. you can see it in the yeah, eyes most yeah. of the time like you'll throw it and you just see like just a little corner in one yeah, eye, yeah. like freeze. The next thing you or saw, like, they pick I'm up like, that leg high. If I, yeah. if I know it might have gone, like if one guy goes in, I'll, mm. I'll go and see or like lean real close mm. and see if they can hit me. And if they'll just like, <laughs> then if they, they don't, don't like it, oh. yeah, they don't, they don't attempt to hit you. I'm like, oh, oh no, you hurt. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm taking that. I do the same thing with a, no, like no, a no. body shot. If I land like a good body shot and I'm like unsure if the guy's mm. hurt, like I'll just like wall up and like come in close. Oh. And see, see, ha see the power on that next punch he throws, because if he comes back oh. and he's like, and he goes like, huh, then you're no. like, oh, well, obviously he's hurt because he <sighs> he cannot throw a hard punch. But it's if you like, boys. if you land like a good shot, and you're like unsure if he's hurt. Like I'll come in with the wall, and if he throws like a good shot, I'm like back up. All right, he's ah. not that hurt. Go back, like set up another one, you know. But if okay. you go in, go in with the wall, and he throws that punch, and it's like, Puh. then you're like, oh, he's hurt. Mm. Blow his head off. Let's oh. go home. You catch me with the body shot, then I'm bombing a left hook straight away. Then, <laughs> if you can, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> if you can, all right, let's get in the off fight. Brave, I found it. Brave CF yep. 44. Yep, going down Bahrain, Kingdom of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Um, beautiful fight, beautiful fight. So you're six and one yep. as a professional. You're fighting Rolando Die, 13 and nine as a professional. Why is he ranked number 10 in the Middle East? He's Filipino. I don't know <laughs> how these rank, obviously, <laughs> hey, like how do these ranking work? Even in the UFC, they're crazy. Ah, yeah, so, I like these Alan, ones. These are, I like these ones. Crazy. These are perfect. These are the, well, they got me like the, 16th to Southeast Asian yeah, lightweights no, or something 15th, weird. Mate, 15th? 15th? You're in and then the they Asian. got a bantamweight ahead of me or something. There's number one or something. I'm like, bro, I'll sleep all anyway, these guys. That, so that's a great opponent. Rolando <laughs> Dai, mm -hmm. that's an incredible matchup. That's a big step up. Former, former UFC fighter. He had... Yep. How many fights in the UFC? One, two, three. Run a four fight contract through the UFC. Yeah. Uh, he's fighting, been fighting in UAE Warriors. Mm, took that bout, I think, and then. Brave CF, last three fights in Brave. Mm. Um, yeah, strong opponent. Are you excited to be up against a, a fighter like this? A, a big step up in competition? Yeah, I mean, like, big step up, um, especially like on the experience ladder. But um, in terms of. Like, I'm not looking past him, but in terms of skills, I think that there's some holes there, but he has some, like, major strengths. So it's real mm -hmm. interesting. Like, can you navigate through, like, the, the, the rough waters 
and like uh, get off like where I, f I feel like he's got big holes, you know what I mean? So well, he's, he's from the Philippines. Uh, yeah, Philippines. Big Tan Muay Thai. So he's not from Team Lakai. Nah, nah. So he started some other place and then I think he's got his own gym now and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't look oh. too much into him and stuff like yeah. that. I try to ignore it, but so I know you, that. Let's talk about, let's talk about Johnny Broom for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not make this guy famous of my name, you know, it's the G code, you know. <laughs> yeah, was well, enough of your opponent. Yeah, yeah. I've had enough talking about him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about John Bruin. So mm. you're, you're training now in, in Auckland yeah. with the boys at City Kickboxing. Mm. You from Auckland originally? Yeah, yeah. I, um. I was born in Auckland. I grew up like when I was like a, a child, you know, from three years old to like maybe 10 years old. I was down in the wider upper just outside of Macedon. Mm. I basically lived at high schools all my life. My dad was like, my whole family were teachers. So like for for Māori families um, around Auckland, all over New Zealand, they might know St. Stephen's um, school out in Bombay. So, you know, that's where I was born. And Spent the first like three years of my life, learned how to swim there. I moved down to Wired Up and my dad was a principal at a college there. So I lived at Rathkill College, came back up um, to Auckland. And then, uh, yeah, I ended up like, you know, at, an, at a boarding school for, for my high school years. And then I'm back there now. So it's like, yeah, it's a crazy little journey. What got you, what got you into fighting? So I know you... Um used to play rugby mm, mm. so how did the transition go from rugby to mixed martial arts that's so, like one of the uh, questions i got was yeah. like has the oh i need to find the question but the question was like do any of like the skills translate like the overhook the underhook like this and that i was oh, like okay. personally for mm. me like nah, nah. but like you grabbing know someone is. you know like Going a hungry. competition physicality yeah, yeah the, Those like skills the, translate. the yeah. physicality of rugby league the yeah. physicality of rugby yeah that translates to mma so not so much like the small injury you're not going to learn like anything technically like mm. the double leg is different from a tackle 100 percent. yeah uh like how to take someone down is is always different and like that's going to change, but just the physicality of the game. Physicality is the and same. And the physicality of a fight. Like, they're mm. exactly the same. Mm. Like, you, you go all in on a tackle yeah. or all out. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no, oh, I'll tackle him at The only play. way you miss there, a tackle no... is if you don't want to make a tackle. That's what <laughs> yeah. Eric Rush told me. He said, if you look at a guy running it straight at you and you think, oh, I hope he sidesteps and runs at my boy next to me, yeah, you're going to yeah, miss yeah. that tackle every time. 100%. But if in your mind you're saying, run at me, boy, <laughs> and, then, and you really dip your shoulder in Sonny Billum, you know, then you're going to sit him down, you know, 100%. And same thing with fighting. You walk into a fight and say, oh, I don't want to be here. Well, that guy's going to get you out of there real quick. Mm -hmm. But if you walk in there like, this guy is not ready for this, you know what I mean? I'm about to pour it on him. Then, you know, that's that's half the battle won already. So how did your transition go from, from rugby to martial arts? Man, like, I was a fighter before I played rugby, you know what I mean? I wasn't a trained fighter or anything, but... <laughs> um, Man, like a, a long journey for how I got into fighting and why I fight now is kind of, uh, went, it went full circle, you know? Like, I grew up, it wasn't about having a certain upbringing or, like, violence in the home or, or anything like that. Like, that's, I mean, everyone's got their own story with that kind of stuff. But when you're a kid, it's like a dog or a cat, you know? Like, dogs and cats learn coordination by fighting. Mm -hmm. So do humans, you know what I mean? Like, if you... If we didn't have all these crazy rules, like, oh, kids aren't allowed to fight in school, kids would be fighting all the time. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> they, they know it's fun, you know what yeah, I mean? They, yeah, yeah. But, and they don't actually know how dangerous it is. So I was like that. I'd get into lots of fights when I was a kid. Go go on holiday or whatever, go to the campground, see a bunch of kids, grab my boys, be like, yo, hey, throw a stone at that kid, let's get into a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was all fun. Four fun and games at first. Yeah. Then when I was at high school, guys, I went to King's College. So... You're a white boy at King's College and you're trying to make it as a rugby player. How many times do you think someone's going to call you a white boy or, you yeah, know, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm walking down the street and I say, oh, hey, what school do you go to? Uh, I went to go to King's College. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Hey, what are you saying to me then? You, you think I'm soft? Yeah. You think yeah. you're tough? Because I go yeah, to King's yeah. College, put your hands up. Let's see. You know? Oh, now you're not so tough. Okay. Yeah. When I'm playing rugby, pop my head up from a scrum. You know, it's a 1A competition in Auckland. There's only so many white boy number eights, you know what I mean? There's one, yeah. and it was me. So, like, hey, white boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Run it straight. Oh, forget this, bro. Let's fight, you know what I mean? 
And from that, because I wasn't so good at rugby, I wasn't as good as the guys I was playing against. Like they obviously they make money playing rugby now and I fight. So I was a better fighter than I was a rugby player. Mm -hmm. And uh I started doing that because I thought it was cool, you know what I mean? I was like, man, I'm not getting any clout. I'm not getting any girls for being a superstar rugby player. But maybe if I, like, <laughs> land some big right, right hooks on on the prop when we play, maybe on Saturday <laughs> maybe night. The, maybe the girls will get keen. Uh, hey, that's the worst idea I've ever heard I realised quickly that only dudes <laughs> think that's cool. Like, girls yeah, do not yeah. think that's cool. And then all of a sudden... You know, I'm not getting any girls on Saturday night. Mate, the so type I'm of girl to... that, that likes violence like that is not... Hey, they definitely don't go to King's College. They definitely don't go to King's College. So then I'm going out on Saturday well, night. Well, a rubbish idea, Paul. We... Trying to impress my friends. I'm fighting anyone I can on a Saturday night now, you know what I mean? And I think that's the way to be cool. So I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll try this MMA stuff. Maybe I'll get even better at fighting and be even cooler. Maybe, you know, my friends will think I'm cool and stuff. And once I started training, I quickly realized, like, for how hard it is to be good at fighting, like feeling cool for a couple seconds around your boys and stuff is not a good enough motivation. So mm -hmm. I kind of checked myself there and then I was like, why am I doing this then? It's way more fun than doing a regular job. And so that took me a long time to figure out, you know, I was an amateur that, for like three or four years. And then when I figured that out that, you know, nobody thinks I'm cool because I'm fighting locally you know on at netball courts and everything like that no one thinks i'm cool okay enough of this do this for fun and so now i do it for fun and uh and i'm happy to say that i can survive by doing this you mm. know what i mean which is like a true privilege especially for mm. people in new zealand like you you know that as, as much as i do you know and all the boys in the gym know that so mm. it's it's crazy now i just feel like really lucky and really blessed that i can be living here and uh and do what i love kind of thing not everyone gets to do that so yeah <clears throat> that's that's how i got into fighting it was there's a lot you spent some story. time so you spent some time mm. um as well well like most uh mm. like most kiwi athletes mm. like you spent some time training overseas you spent mm. a lot of time training in uh bali mma yeah how, yeah. how was the experience over there man it was crazy because before i went to bali um you know i had come in <clears throat> and done a few sessions with you guys and but I didn't know how to transition from what I was doing like you know training as an amateur and doing all kinds of crazy jobs like some real crazy jobs that like you know that's what motivated me to make a change because I was like doing such stink jobs that like I wanted to I thought man there's no way this is all I can do you know what I mean like, and the amount surely, of times I've heard uh, like Eugene yell at Israel like how about you piss off back to the gas station? Because yeah, he's like, <laughs> hey, man. he's like working night shift of a shift to the gas exactly. station. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. Like, so I, um, yeah, I got a call from um, one of my coaches who had moved to to Bali, and and I think I was supposed to be fighting a kickboxing show here just to stay busy. Yeah, and. It was like New Year's, so like I wasn't trying to do the diet and I didn't want to answer the phone because I <laughs> wasn't going to make weight in like four weeks or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I missed like three or four phone calls and he calls me and he's like, hey, bro, I'm in Bali and I've got this job, you know, get over here and I'll hook you up with like a room. So I sold everything I could and I got a couple thousand dollars together um, and then I just went out there and I was hustling for ages, you know, for yeah. and, and, then, and then I was lucky enough to meet some guys that – put me on got real busy as a professional my first 10 months you know six fights in 10 months have to yeah it's like know? a different it's like a different motivation when you're different doing it for hustle. survival man for when it's survival <laughs> it's like it's like the best motivation but it's like you know it's like I mean? different when you're comfortable and someone comes to you with a fight yeah, you're like yeah. oh how much how yeah, much oh, well, but like when you're when you're starving yeah. and someone's like there might be a fight you're like Man. Where? Where? Exactly, exactly. I'll go, I'll go. Like my first he? pro fight was like basically free, you know. I fought on um, Australia. They they said, okay, we'll pay you 500 bucks, show and win, that, that's it. But we're not buying you flights. There's no hotel. There's no yeah, food yeah, money yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I stayed at, um, for people who know, like, fighting scene here, I stayed at Felicia's house, Felicia, the, fa the forefather. Yeah. So shout out to him. Like, he gave me a place <laughs> to stay for, for two oh, man, nights. He's a good people. Yeah, man. Like, uh, Ben Keller picked me up from the airport, you know, and, and, and took me across. And um, so I made no money on that fight because I paid for the flights and everything. And, uh, but, like, I think a week before that, I got offered to fight, you know, my second pro fight, which was for Brave and Jakarta. 
nine days after my first one. So I'm about to fight my first fight, seven days out or whatever, and then I accept to take a fight like nine days afterwards. <laughs> um, and I was thinking like, hey, like, you know, talking to my coaches, like, hey, you, you know, I don't have no management or nothing. I'm like, hey, should I like, do I like pull out of this one that's not going to make me any money? They're like, well, why would you do that? If you can go 2-0, and go 2-0. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I did. So it's like, it worked out perfect. I think I fought my third fight. Like, I said, I don't want to diet anymore after doing this. <laughs> um, and they were like, well, sweet. Here's a fight in six weeks after that one at welterweight. So you can just, you know, take a week off, bump your weight up, come back into training when you feel like it, and you can have your third pro fight in six, you know, in like a total span of like seven weeks or whatever. Man. I went through, you know, in seven weeks. And then I thought to myself, look at this, boys. I'm, I'm on to something I'm unstoppable. Here. I'm unstoppable. <laughs> like, line them up, line them up. You know what I mean? I think it was like that when I was 1-0. Oh. I yeah, was like, I'm yeah. the next Anderson Silva. Next fight, get my ass whooped. And I was like, no, nah, well. <laughs> and that was Bali. Like, Bali just taught gone. me in two years that I was there, taught me so many lessons, man. And like, but the probably the biggest, like, the biggest learning curve was that everything, you just said it before, like, everything I needed, was right back here waiting mm, for me mm. and so i landed on and including personally professionally everything landed on christmas day um last year like you know one o'clock just in time to make the late the late lunch at my at my cousin's <laughs> place um my cousin who got me into fighting so you know shout out to my my bro scotty and um and i messaged eugene and he said oh yeah we're obviously training on boxing day yeah and so i went in you guys were getting ready for for USC Auckland, we did. Uh, hung out. I think we did a rape wrestle on. We did wrestling on Christmas <laughs> Day. Sparring. What were we doing? We might have sparred yeah, on the boxing day or something boxing like day. that. You know, it was perfect, man. Like you know, and uh, yeah, I've been here ever since. I love it, man. Training at CKB is like the biggest blessing. It's crazy, man. Well, no one missed that fight. Mm. Thursday, fifth of November. Oh, I don't know so if I've got to clear this up. I've got to clear this up. That's not it's New the fifth of November. In Bahrain time, it'll be a Thursday night. So in New Zealand, it'll actually be the Friday morning on the 6th of November. Hell and I finally <laughs> figured that out, like, because I got it wrong somewhere else, you know. Yeah, so I want yeah, to get yeah. it right out of respect, you know. Me. So, so next, it's free. next Friday. Yeah, it's free. Next Friday. In the I, morning. Will share, I, will, I will share the yeah, link. If yeah. everyone wants, anyone who wants to watch a fight, Easy. just stay tuned to my social media. I'll put it on my social Man. media. And you'll be able to find that John Bruin, Rolando guy, um, great card, Brave FC, Brave CF, don't miss it. There's another couple of um, local events that I want to cover quickly cool. because we got some, we got some Australasians and some pretty big cards. So mm. next, dude, this is Friday, the thirtieth. That's this Friday. Yeah, that's this Friday. Uh, there's a one FC in Singapore. Okay, cool. Well, the main event, Angla Nasang. He's defending his light heavyweight championship. But we have uh, Martin Nguyen. So Martin Nguyen's fighting Than Lee for the one FC lightweight championship. Now mm. I know he's the featherweight champion. I'm unsure if he already holds the lightweight championship. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have to double check. He had it, but I don't know if he still got it. Yeah, I'm real slack with one. Lately. Well, they got a stacked um, lightweight division. But mm. Martin Nguyen, that's another one you need to keep your eye on. There's another guy, Tony Caruso. He's fighting Edward Folayang. Oh, now, Edward, Edward is from yep. Team Lakay. He's mm. fought a lot of Australasian fighters. He's a he's a huge name. He's a huge name. Fought Tony Caruso, he's 7-1 as a professional. Um, and I'm excited to see what he can do against a legend like Edward. Mm. Um, so make sure you watch that one championship card. Also... On this Saturday, there's an internal card, Eternal MMA 54. Now that goes down in Queensland. There's like a bit of a, this is like a bit of a lightweight tournament. This is actually what the, this is a great example of what, what the UFC should do mm. with their like tournament style because they've got, um, and there's four pro fights on the card yeah. and they're all lightweight fights. All pro lightweight fights. Tim Schultz, he was the amateur XFC champion. He's okay. um, just turned professional. One and zero. He's fighting Cody Barnwell. Cody's uh, three and zero. He he came up through the IFMA circuit. Okay. Um, so I think he's you know one of the best guys. Come through the IFMA scene, turned professional. Now he's three and zero undefeated. Another. That's a great fight. Tim Schultz, Cody Barnwell. Don't miss that one. Uh, Co-main event: Daniel Hill. 
versus David Martinez. Now, Daniel Hill, I'm not um, too familiar with. He's 3-0. and It's got 3-0 and here. David Martinez, um, I know him. Mm. I watched him fight in XFC when he was 6-0, and but he's coming off um, a couple of losses. So he's looking to turn that around. It was actually like his missus. It was like, I was coming up for the Iaquina fight, and his mm. missus was like, oh, well, if a corner gets injured, um, David Martinez will fight you. And I was like, oh, well, that's not really how that works. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I can't like really just works. like throw in some random guy. But um, so there's that fight. Smiling assassin, <laughs> I think. Isn't yeah, yeah, smiling yeah, assassin. Super smiling guy. assassin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he was like walking out smiling all day. So yeah. that's a great culminating event. The main event is incredible. Dim Skillies, four and two. He fought Blood Diamond that's in the right. last, uh, in the... Auckland Eternal card. His last fight was against Bloods. Lost the decision to Bloods, but he'll be looking to turn it around against Blake Dolan, Dolan, Donnelly. Mm. Blake Donnelly. Now, I know Blake. Um, he's training at Canberra at the moment. It's Stockade. Mm. Uh, but he was like originally a training partner of Alex Wolkanovsky. He was training with the freestyle MMA guys yeah. uh, in Wollongong with, with Volk. So he's, yeah, he's 4 0 undefeated. Um, who did he last beat? I'm gonna double check this because he just he's coming off a pretty big win. He believe he won. Oh, he beat David Martinez. He stopped. Uh, he stopped David Martinez in the third round for the AFC title. Oh, right. so he won the AFC title. So that's an incredibly stacked card. Don't miss that Eternal MMA 54 Queensland this Saturday. So there's a lot of local action going on. We got time for a couple of questions, right? Yeah, fine. We'll fire some questions through. I put a post up. Now, I'm sick of getting... I just... I took a screenshot of this one because I'm just sick of getting these messages. The amount of people that are sending me, like, paragraph-long scripts about how the UFC title pitch is going to look at this. Gagey, Poirier, vacant title, uh, one and two, then five, then Poirier fights McGregor. Then if they lose, then it's like, bro, relax. The UFC's going to sort this out. Yeah. Just chill. What's going to... And then everyone's like... You know, has the UFC got in touch with you yet? Have they given you a call? I'm going to explain to you how this works. In about a week or two, the UFC is going to send me an email with a name on it and a date, and I'm going to just fight that guy. And that's going to be it. <laughs> so much easier. So much easier than people think this game. is. Yeah. Consume less media. That's what I just say <laughs> to these people. Stop watching all this MMA media drama, man. If you could change one rule in the UFC, what would it be? That's what they're asking me. Yeah, that's asking a good question. Yeah, oh, um, we'll be asking both of us. Let them like get rid of that twelve to six elbow rule. But that's like I, I that's don't a nothing know. rule. I'm, I'm, I'm about nothing. Like it's but, so easy to to like put like a that in itself is like uh, yeah. Actually, useless. if I could change one, that's, that's kind like of like a, a that's like a useless elbow yeah. anyway. I've thought about that one just because it's such a stupid rule, mm. but it has like no real effect anyway. Like nah, coming, nah. it's actually impossible to come straight down with your elbow. It's not like someone's an expert in that and they're like, you're robbing me of my finish. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, By yeah. making that oh, rule. Oh, well, that was the Matt Hamill one, right? Like he got DQ'd for like that stupid ass elbow. True, true. That's a good one. I don't know. I want to throw something fun in this. Let's, let's go. Um, Give me an example. Let me, let me I want to grab the cage. Ooh. No, don't ban cage grab. You can grab the cage. Get rid of that rule. Do you know actually why that's made? That's been made illegal. Go back and watch UFC. I can't remember which UFC, mm. but I've watched every UFC, and it was a Tank Abbott fight, and he fought another big fat guy. Mm. Oh, what was his name? He fought like a another big fat Italian brawler guy, and mm. this is how the fight went. It was like a half an hour fight, one half an hour round. They touch gloves, and he like ran and pressed him against the cage and grabbed the cage and because they were so fat he like had him stuck there and he was oh. like just holding the cage see i couldn't even do it to you because neither of us are fat enough maybe when we were like mm. 60 years old and we got big beer guts and he st he stood there and held him there and he just like slowly kneed his legs mm. for like half an hour next ufc event grabbing a cage was illegal that's why it's been banned. Such it's an because effective technique. You can't two, do <laughs> two fat guys grabbed the cage and held each other there hugging oh, no. for half an hour. That's why grabbing the cage is illegal. It's not like because mm. someone grabbed it once and their finger twisted off and they broke their finger. Like they make it out, like the UFC referees make it out like it's the biggest deal in the world. Like, yeah, it can stop <laughs> takedowns. Yeah, but it's going to make the fight more 
entertaining. Yeah, like, yeah. imagine how much fun it would be if you could like Stop scramble back like to your feet by like grabbing yeah. the cage and scrambling. You'd there'd be a lot, there'd be a lot True. harder to hold someone down if you could grab the cage and drag yourself back to your feet. So that that would be my suits one. Me. one yeah, run. I like that. Yeah, it suits me. Suits I don't me. mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I like bring that. In, bring back the cage grab. Mm. Oh, this one I just want to clarify. This is from. Timmy PKG. Hey Dan, listening to your potty from last week and heard about the bucket list training. I got a mate who would be keen. Let me know if you have any updates to do with that. Now, what I put out last week was about the bucket list event was just to see if people were interested in running it in Auckland. It's like mm. a 10 week, you just do a 10 week uh, training cramp. They do it down south, right? They do it. They are nuts. Yeah, they yeah. are nuts. And I was like, no one from Auckland is going to do this. Like, no one up here is mm. that crazy. There are a lot of crazy people up okay. here too. I got like a ridiculous response from about hundreds of people being like, yeah, my, okay. I'll do it. My mate will do it. He's keen. He's keen. That I'm going to run. 2021, I'm going to run a bucket list event up here in Auckland. They'll run them down in, uh, um, so Matt Tour only already runs him in Dunedin and Queenstown. Mm. Carl Webber, my coach, is going to take one in, in Christchurch. And then I'm going to take one in Auckland. So 2021, we put out, that was just to gauge interest. Mm. There was a ton of interest. So now we're going to do it. So stay tuned and I'll keep you updated about that. This is, mate, this guy's setting you, teeing you up. The good, bad and ugly 112 from South Auckland, New Zealand. Nice. Who is his top three sponsors? Go. Oh, That's a great question. Wait, that I would okay. want to sponsor nah, me. No, no, like, like right now. Give my, give my, give my shout outs. You give me shout outs. Oh man, like, Oh, what, what, I'm going to pick three? I mean, like, oh, out of my big, <laughs> long list. I've got to give a shout-out to to the guys at NZ Boxer, of course. Um, Muscle Fuel for helping me out with the diet and everything like that. Um, working with the fight dietitian, helping me lose weight. Enzyme Coffee. Um, Double Up Authentic. Shout-out to those boys. So, up, I mean, uh, and, and a whole <laughs> bunch of people who, like, you know, they help me. So, really, they sponsor me. But, like, you know, there's no money exchange or anything like that. Everyone... Everyone who helps me is not. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. who sponsors me is not getting their money back. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like nobody's making money off me. So people be like, "Oh, you know, no, it's a dirty back. game. It's not that dirty. Nobody's <laughs> taking my money. You know, like my money's safe and sound because there is none. So it, it is what it is. Everyone's just giving me stuff. They're giving it away. So yo, thank you to oh, everyone who helps me out. You know? This is my only note this week, mm. and I have written Twitter on here because this is something. So. This is my this is my public service announcement <laughs> for the young fighters out there. Not even young fighters. Mm. Do you have Twitter? No. And I went around sitting and I asked like everyone, do you have Twitter? Do you have Twitter? Do you have Twitter? You wasted your time. Of course not. You know? No one's got Twitter. Get Twitter. Mm. If you watch like the UFC matchmakers, Sean Shelby, only only social media account the guy has mm. is Twitter. Mm. So if you think about that and you're not on Twitter and you only have Instagram and Facebook, mm then you can't expect them to know who on earth you are. Mm. So any young fighter out there, get Twitter. You don't even have to be a big name. Start building your your mm. Twitter up because it's like any other social media. It takes a bit of time. And there's no support for Australasian fighters on Twitter. That's why I purely use it to troll people and get in arguments. Perfect. That's what I use it for. You use it how you want to use it. Thank you, John, for coming on the show. Easy. We're wrapping it up. Get Twitter. Thank you very much. <laughs>